Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the third part of my video series featuring CNC plasma controllers built incorrectly, or for that matter, tables in this instance. This video is going to cover basically a new vendor. And the reason I'm saying new is YouTube channel's got like 280 subs. Um, and he's apparently using it to market all of these tables that he assembles. Well, you guys, after watching my series, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about when I cover the details missing on tables like this and also when they're trying to sell you machines like this. For my novice guys out there, ask the right questions, get the right answers, and save your hard-earned money and get what you deserve when you're looking at production robotics. So let's jump right in. This is my brand new four foot by four foot CNC plasma table. It's actually four and a half feet that way and almost five feet this way. So you can cut a true four foot square inside of there. It has the Z touch probe. So when it comes down, it, it touches off to the part every time. So you get an accurate cut, goes around, does the cuts. Now I want you guys to really think about something. And I always find this interesting. They discuss accuracy kind of arbitrarily, especially when you consider we're looking at this table and you guys will review it as he goes around and, you know, basically films it. I want you to look for a ground bus bar or for that matter, any grounding on this table that would be indicative of him understanding what is required with a table like this. We see a beautiful paint job. We see a table that looks like it's constructed correctly in sense of the mechanics, but the electronics are what separate a table from working properly from basically a paperweight, regardless of how pretty it is. It has a uh, welded in water pan. This thing's welded right to the frame. It has a drain with the plug down there. You just turn the lever, you can drain it all out because when you put uh, that coolant in there, it's kind of expensive and you don't want to have it evaporate on you. So if you're not cutting every day, you can drain it out through there, put it in a bucket and then pour it back in here when you're, when you're ready. It does have auto homing on it. So you, you uh, home all the axis and they'll go back, they'll know where zero is. And then soft limits are set so it can't go off the table this way or this way. Now, did you hear what he just said? Anybody out there looking to buy a chassis from a vendor who's stating that he has a switch on one end and on the other end of the gantry in this instance, he doesn't have any protection for this axis to actually slip off if it travels too far. He set a soft limit. Now, I want you to think about just how ironic that is. So you didn't build in an end stop for the chassis. So basically, you're hoping that the individual always remembers to set soft limits in Mach 3 because it is not an automatic setting. And therefore, if you make a mistake and forget to set it and just happen to travel all the way to the end of the opposite direction of where you're homing from, you can actually have the axis literally, meaning the Z axis, disengage from the gantry. Now, I want you guys to think about how crazy this sounds. It comes with... And we can look right here and you can see... There is no end stop. We have the linear rails, and then that's it. The prime, prime weld, weld cut, cut 60. 60. This is brand, brand new. new. That has that a three-year three warranty, warranty on, it. on it. See, what you'll find these guys do is they like to discuss things they think they understand. That's what typically happens. The components that they get, they talk about. The components they don't get, they don't talk about. And as he just panned around this chassis, we'll come back over... We'll do it again. Comes with pay attention. the prime well. There is no grounding on this side either. Cut 60. This is brand new. That has a three-year warranty on it. It'll cut up to three-quarters of an inch plate. Right. He can read these specs, and that's what he regurgitates. The specs he reads are the specs he's familiar with because this is equipment he's used. However, when you mount a switch on a plasma table and on one end and using soft limits on the other so you basically can alleviate yourself extra work of putting an end stop in or for that matter mounting another switch which I'm certain aren't using double shielded cable 
it really tells you a lot about what you're dealing with. But if you don't know what you're looking at because you're a novice and you see the pretty paint job and he discusses what the water table is as far as it being mounted and welded and all this other neat stuff, they blind you with footwork. I'm telling you now, ask the question that matters. How is the table automated? Show me the electronics. I will have my engineer get back with you and we can go from there and then I'll make my offer. No problem. It'll pierce and cut. Once again, no grounding here. We see the controller. He never opens it. It's a really nice machine. I built a couple of these for customers. They're, they're really happy with them. Never had any issues. They're really happy with them. They never had any issues. So where? Where are these clients? Where are these customers? Let me tell you why I always say the word client, because I realize that it's a lifelong endeavor when I sell a system to someone. And the reason I say that is because at one time or another, that client will come back to me for support. I realize that. When you use the word customer, the only companies that should use the word customer are fire and forget, like fast food, retail, those type of clients where all they do is simply sell over and over again in a direct flipping format. Industrial type machines are always clients because those companies that are professional understand there, this is a lifelong endeavor with this person or company. It's going to be there forever for support. It's going to be there forever with legacy equipment. And this is stuff that needs to be understood. Once again, if we analyze the cabling coming in here, we don't know if there's any grounding done. I can tell you right now, the chassis itself is not grounded. It should have a ground bus bar. Regardless of him not connecting it, it should have it so that the client knows he must connect it when he gets to his new shop. That's a question that always comes up and something really worthy of discussing. Um, all the parts are really accessible online. I give a one-year warranty on all the, all the mechanical components like the servos and limit switches and stuff like that. Those are servos? Wait, wait. He just said servos. I'm sure you all caught that. Those are stepper motors, guys. He doesn't even know the motors he's selling on the equipment. There's no encoder on the back of these motors. As a matter of fact, we come over here. We'll just come back a little bit. We'll let him pan around. It's a really nice machine. I built a couple of these. That's not a servo, guys. That is a stepper. For customers, they're, they're really happy with them. Never had any issues. Um, all the parts are really accessible online. I give a one-year warranty on all the all the mechanical components like the servos and limit switches and stuff like that and past that warranty you can you can buy these parts really accessible online you don't have to go through me you're not stuck going through me paying top dollar for parts um i just give you the links and you can order all the stuff online so basically i'll just pass away all of my business model to you because i don't want to deal with the hassle and it also comes with uh mach 3 so Mach 3 is also open source, which is great. So for instance, if you want to add a fourth axis to this table, a fourth axis indexer, you can just research it, add it, wire it right into the board, do it yourself, no problems, because Mach 3, there's, there's a lot of support, a lot of forums. It's open. A lot of support, a lot of forums. He didn't name himself. He just said a lot of support, a lot of forums. This is also very typical. Listen closely to what he says software so for instance if you have um i don't want to say one of the major brands of cnc plasma tables and you want to add a fourth axis you can't because they use their own software they lock you in you'll have to buy their fourth axis and access their software and it's you know astronomical from there that's so one that's one good thing about this machine is it's open source, it's open source. So, you so you can do whatever you want with it if you want to add a router to it you can add a router to it you can wire right into it you can do the research and do it yourself so we'll walk you through here let's see do some auto homing so you can turn, so you some, can turn some of these limits up and down, and down too. I got, I've, it, I got it where it homes. Uh, I don't know, 20, 20, inches, 20 inches a minute. So I don't want it, so too, I don't fast want it too fast slamming, slamming into the limit switches, switches but, you but you can see here it'll it'll bump the, it'll bump the limit switch, come back off it, and then go slow, then go back, slow into back into it. There it is. Now it's going slow back into it. And it'll automatically reference the zero if you're on machine coordinates. So guys, just to reiterate for my novice guys out there, you see the soft limit illuminated uh, as far as the clickable button on in Mach 3. If you forget to activate that on this chassis, and I'm going to state this again, on the opposite end of travel, you will find that your Z-axis 
will actually come off of your gantry from the way this gentleman explained setting it up. There you go. So now the same thing with the X. It'll come over, touch off, bounce back, and that'll be something like that. It won't. It'll just stop. And the same thing, zero over that way, like 48 inches or something, like, or something that. like that. It won't, it'll just stop. And the same thing with, with the Y, it'll stop here and it'll also stop before you come back and hit these these uh, right. limit switches here. What he should have said is, I hope it will stop if it travels to the end point on this location due to the fact that I, I made sure I didn't install a home or limit switch because it would have been more work, more labor. And I didn't want to put an end stop at the table, so I just install a soft limit, meaning I'll just set the soft limits, which you could have done away with switches altogether, and just put end stops on the table. But, again, this is what you see with these kind of builds, guys. You see a guy who built a table for himself. He then says, hey, I can build these and resell them. He thinks he has the knowledge to do that. And what he really has is fabrication knowledge. He has knowledge to build mechanics. He can automate the table. He took a set of plans. He read them. He determined that he could build it. He built it. But where he lost the knowledge is where it's irreplaceable because he's not looking at the fact he doesn't understand the electronics on a plasma system. He understands the plasma cutter. He doesn't understand what must be done in order to assure stability when using this type of production robotics. There it comes in. It'll touch it real smooth. There it is. Boom. So then I get asked, maybe this is just one, you know, isolated version of what's going on. Well, let's check again with this guy because he likes selling these tables. Guys, we see another table he's selling. This is a 12 foot by 6 foot. You can see him cover the details here. And again, we have a pretty much a three-dimensional view on this side of the chassis. You can see no ground bus. Matter of fact, you see these tables always coated. A lot of these guys like to paint them. It makes them look clean, they think. The issue is, is you should coat the table. It does certainly protect it. But you want to leave an area where there is bare metal so that we could put our ground bus for conduction. If you have a coating on there, you're not going to have conduction. Again, he never covers the electronics. Let's listen to what he says. So this is it, the 12 foot by six foot plasma table with the four foot overhang. It's all complete. Got it all set up. Torch height controller, probe. Now guys, you remember we covered exactly what happened on that one end stop. And you could see he didn't learn from what he did on that table. We can see it right here, plain as day. There is no end stop. Once again, that Z-axis travels over here. The poor end user forgets to set a soft limit and buy. Everything's done. Everything's done. Once again, we're on this side. No ground bus. This is a gigantic table. Once again, we're on this side. No ground bus. Once again, we can see we've got the plasma mounted on the chassis, no ground bus. It's got the touchscreen laptop. Once again, goes into, it's got a touchscreen laptop. Again, trying to discuss what he understands. This happens all the time. You'll see these guys cover whatever they understand. As soon as you ask them questions about the electronics, that's where things are going to get interesting. Top. Top. I have to tune it a little bit, just uh, like the probing. I need to go just a little bit faster and stuff like that. But This is also very, very indicative of what you see online. You can see he's been testing the table. We got little cuts here. And you can see how small these cuts are, guys. This is what these guys typically do. They show you it cut for a minute, two minutes, and then you say, oh, it's good, ready to go. Watch. Yeah, I got a piece of wood and a big angle. Yeah. 
So that's it. That one's complete. Okay, guys, that wraps up volume three. I hope that I've answered some of your questions. Again, dealing with vendors like this, I know they're all over the place. They're turning up everywhere. Um, keep in mind, the big thing is that you always ask the right questions. And now, hopefully, we've covered the ones that mean the most. Again, every table is great until it's not great with stability due to its electronics. I don't care how well it's built. If the electronics are not done correctly, you have a paperweight. Thank you all for your support. Take care.